Welcome to the Final Cut Express HD 3.5 Editing Workshop DVD. This portion of the DVD is intended primarily for iMovie users, those of you making the transition from iMovie to Final Cut Express. The two applications have a lot in common, obviously. They're both video editing applications that work with DV and HDV, but fundamentally they're very different. They both work with different formats. iMovie works with DV Stream, which is a muxed format, the audio and the video are embedded into a single data stream, whereas Final Cut Express works with QuickTime, where the video and the audio tracks are separate and they're much more easy to manipulate. There's also one other fundamental difference between the two applications. At its heart, iMovie is a destructive editing application. It works by manipulating the media on your hard drive. It cuts out pieces, it changes the media on the hard drive as it works. Final Cut Express, on the other hand, is an entirely non-linear, non-destructive editing system. The media on your hard drive is not touched. The application simply points to the media and tells the computer what to do with it, how to play it back, and, what, and how to affect it. It doesn't really affect the media on the hard drive at all. That means that you can also use media in multiple applications, in multiple projects, without having to copy it into the project the way you do into iMovie. Let's take a look at the interfaces of these two applications. iMovie has a clips pane for organizing your material, a viewer to look at your clips, and a clips viewer where you can lay out your material. It also has a timeline where you can see your video and your audio. In Final Cut, the clips pane is called the browser and is on the upper left side of the screen. The browser isn't just a place to park your clips, it also serves as a powerful tool for organizing your media. We'll look at the browser in the second lesson of the book. The viewer in Final Cut Express is to look at individual clips. It can be switched to show you any clip in the browser or to a clip from the timeline. The canvas, on the other hand, only does one thing. It shows you the output of the sequence or the timeline. Whatever you're looking at in the timeline appears here in the canvas. The sequence timeline is made up of multiple tracks of video and audio. You see here two tracks of video and four tracks of audio. You can have up to 99 tracks of each. Let's look at how to capture these two applications. I think of iMovie as an automatic. Basically, you put it in gear and it goes. Final Cut Express is a little bit more complicated. It's like a stick shift. You have to put the car into gear and you have to work the gears to work the application. But it allows you to be much more efficient and precise with what you're doing. Let's look at how they work. In iMovie, you simply hit the import button and the computer will start capturing, splitting each shot into a separate clip and placing it in the clips pane. In Final Cut, you have the capture window with a couple of different options. For more information, see the section in Lesson 7 called Strategies for Capturing. What's most like iMovie is to use Capture Now. Put the camcorder in play and press the Now button. It will start capturing video and will keep capturing until you either run out of tape, run out of drive space, or you press the Escape key. This will create one long clip. Once FCE has captured your large video clip, it brings it into your browser as a single file. You can now run DV Start Stop Detect which will add markers, segmenting the clip where each shot change took place. Simply select the markers and use Modify Make Subclips to create subclips of your media and break them up into separate shots just as in iMovie.